That's <laughs> oh boy, we got a big baby now eating the food of the baby. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> you got caught on camera, Kobe. Uh, eating the baby's food. Okay. Today is July 30. It's Tuesday. It's almost the end of the month. Well, how many days do we have in July? 34. <laughs> okay, so today is the penultimate day. Huh? Hmm? 31. Said penultimate. Anyway, July 30. So today. We hear about the apostles asking Jesus for an explanation of the gospel we just heard uh, a few days ago about the <coughs> sower who went out to sow. Oh no, sorry, about the, uh, the, the, the owner of a field and how uh, after a while after sowing the good wheat, uh, the weeds sprung up. Okay. Uh, you know, in, in the olden days, in the old version of the gospel, the weeds there were called cockle. Okay? Cockle. The, the, the wheat and the cockle. So, I remember a priest, a very good friend of mine, who just arrived from, uh, from uh, Australia. And he, I remember this very clearly because he was asking me, what is that word that was used... Uh, in in the gospel with uh, with the, uh, the the wheat and the something it wasn't weeds in the in the old version of the gospel it wasn't weeds what is that word and I remember struggling through uh, you know uh, my vocabulary and my memory trying to remember and after a few days I remembered it was cockle we, we can look that we can look up the word cockle and uh, find out what it really means Anyway, so today, uh, after Jesus dismissed the crowds, hey, by the way, we're reading from St. Matthew chapter 13, verses 36 to 43. So Jesus dismisses the crowds and his disciples approached him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. It's very interesting how the apostles were so simple-minded uh, that sometimes even the most obvious things they need an explanation for, right? Maybe today you would have thought, yeah, well, that's obvious. That's about this and that. It's about good and evil. But the apostles were very simple men, uneducated. They were fishermen. So sometimes even the, the simplest of things, uh, they needed to ask Jesus for an explanation. Okay? Now, let's stop right here and consider this for ourselves. Sometimes we too can think that we know everything. Sometimes we can be tempted by the devil to think that we are smart enough to figure things out for ourselves. And sometimes the devil the devil <laughs> can tempt us to think that we are smarter than our parents, that we know better than our parents, that our parents don't understand us, that our parents don't understand what's happening to us, and that therefore, that therefore we should uh, assert ourselves and do what we think is right for us. Okay? That is a very, very big temptation that the devil uh, always poses to us. In fact, it's not only for children like you. For everybody. Everybody. Even adults. In fact, many adults fall into this kind of a temptation. They think they've figured things out already. They know how the world works. That they don't need any counsel. That, that they don't need any anybody's help to explain things to them. Teenagers mm -hmm. are... are uh, are, are notorious for this kind of thinking. They think they, they, have no, they know enough to figure things out for themselves. And therefore, they ignore advice. They ignore their parents' counsels. They ignore what other people tell them. 
Okay, so that's a very, very bad temptation which we have to all struggle to avoid. And one way of avoiding that is to is to listen. To listen as our Lord, as our Lord will caution everybody at the end of this gospel, he will say, Whoever has ears ought to hear. In other words, if you are fortunate enough to be given the ability to listen, you better listen. Okay? Listen to good advice. Listen to the counsel of people who have authority over you. Listen to, to those who, who are uh, looking after your welfare. Because they only have your best interest in mind. Okay, Ava is competing with us. Uh-oh, what is that? <laughs> Give her her milk now. Okay, so the apostles asked for advice. Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And so Jesus proceeds to tell them, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. Right? Jesus himself. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. So those who absorb the will of God, listen to God's word and fulfill his will are the ones who <clears throat> belong <clears throat> to his own kingdom. <clears throat> the weeds are the children of the evil one, the product of the devil. An enemy who sows them is the devil. Mm -hmm. The harvest is at the end of the age and the harvesters are the angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will be at the end of the age. The weeds, the children of the devil, will all be collected and burned in hell. And the Son of Man will send his angels and will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers to hell. Okay? <clears throat> They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. So, all who cause others to sin and all evildoers will go to hell. What does that phrase mean? It means, of course, sinners who don't repent, right, will go to hell. But, but there is one particular sin that our Lord refers to here, which, which is very, which is very bad, and 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 really, uh, uh, in another gospel, our Lord tells them it's better for these people not to be born. Better that a millstone be tied around their neck and throw, they be thrown under the sea. Who are those? Those are the people who cause scandal. See? Those who cause others to sin. Those are people who cause scandal. Those who cause others to sin. So, um, and, and um, okay, so who are those people who cause others to sin? Well, the, those who overtly, purposely, uh, do bad things to others, right? The sin of commission, those who do bad things and lead other people to sin by their bad example or by their promptings and their pushing people to sin. But there's also another kind of scandal which is less obvious to people and which, which many times is the kind of scandal that we, people who try to follow the will of God already, still Commit, but we do not realize it. And what is that kind of scandal? That's a scandal of giving bad example. That's the scandal of the sin of omission, not doing the good things we should have done. Okay? Not doing the good to others which we could have and should have done when we could have done it. And sometimes... That is even a worse kind of uh, scandal. And when we do that, we normally don't realize that we are not rendering to others what is due to them. 
For example, there's very small things that we could think about here. Uh, the charity that you did not extend to somebody who needed that charity. The help that you denied your, your siblings or your neighbors or the people around you. The smile that you did not give to that person who perhaps needed that consolation at that precise moment. And you withheld that smile and gave, you, gave him a frown instead. The little help that um, uh, you could have given uh, your sibling in praying, for example, when instead of praying the vocal prayers correctly, you decide to mumble by yourself. Nobody understands what you're saying. See? When you get distracted at Mass and cause other people beside you to get distracted because of, I don't know, whatever it was you were doing or you're chatting with them or you're looking elsewhere and things like that. See? Very simple little things that you did or didn't do can cause scandal, can cause other people to sin. So, I want to remind you to be very careful about those things. Right? To be very careful about those things. Causing others to sin because of our bad example or because of not doing the good that we could have done for them. Then the last line here says, Whoever has ears ought to hear. Ought is a very strong word. It is a must. It is, it is a requirement that we hear, that we listen to the Word of God and do it, right? Not just listen, but put it into practice. It's the same way that our, our Lord said a few days ago, right? Who are my brothers and my mother? Then he points to the apostles as those who hear the word of God and do it. Those are my brothers, my mother and my sisters. Okay? So we are also being encouraged by our Lord here. Listen, listen, listen to what I'm teaching you. Listen to all the warnings I have given you. Listen to my word. Listen and put them into practice. Put them into practice because that is the way that you will avoid sin, that you will avoid temptation. That is the way you will avoid giving scandal to others. Listen, listen, listen and put these things into practice. Put these things into practice. You cannot keep ignoring, ignoring and thinking that you know better. Let us be like the apostles who were simple. In their manner of following our Lord. They listen. They ask for an explanation. They are not cocky and think that they know better than everybody else. Like the Pharisees and the scribes did. They were humble. They asked when they didn't understand anything. They asked, please explain to us the parable. Because we want to learn. We want to listen. We want to understand. And because we want to fulfill your will. Okay, let's keep these things in mind today as we go off to Mass and as we pray about the Gospel and ask our Lord, ask the Holy Spirit, ask our Lady, ask St. Joseph, ask our guardian angels, we have plenty of allies, eh, to listen to the Word of God and put it into practice. Okay, bye-bye everybody, we're off to Mass, have a good day. Bye-bye.